This is the Saucony Endorphin Speed version two, a lightweight daily trainer that is reliable on a long run while also a solid pick for tempo and race days. But is it enough of a departure from the version one? And is it worth it with version three just around the corner? Stick around and I'll try to answer those questions after 200 miles in the Endorphin Speed two. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle and today we are talking Saucony Endorphin Speed version two after 200 miles. Today, we're gonna to be talking about specs of the shoe, the uh, what's new in the shoe. We're gonna be talking about the breakdown of the shoe after 200 miles. And then we're gonna be going into some KPI, uh, the key performance indicators where I talk about certain races and workouts I did as evidence to kind of back up my final conclusions on the shoe, which will obviously follow all of that. So stick around, skip to any of the chapters if you would like. Um, and yeah, let's get into the specs of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2. Okay, so I like to get these things out of the way early. You are looking at a neutral style running shoe. It is true to size, medium fit throughout, slightly tighter heel and the update with a minimal arch. And you're looking at 7.9 ounces in the men's size nine. Drop and stack height are always a big topic. And in this shoe, you are looking at an eight millimeter drop, somewhere around 35 millimeter in the heel to a 27 in the forefoot. I saw some you know, specs ranging from 39 in the heel, um, whereas from the Saucony website, you had 35.5 in the heel to 27.5 in the heel. So we'll stick with that. Then just looking at some of the materials used in the shoe, you've got a mono mesh upper, which is like a lot of shoes. Then you've got that Power Run PB midsole, which is nice cushy foam. You've got a nylon plate that runs heel to toe. And then finally, you do have that rubber outsole strategically placed uh, for higher impact zones. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the specs of this shoe. So what is new about this shoe? Well, you've got a slightly snugger heel in this bad boy, um, which honestly for me was kind of nice. I did size up a half size for this, but the fact that it was slightly tighter in the heel is great. I've got a very narrow heel, very narrow foot all around. So um, yeah, heel update, pretty cool for me. Breathability, it's supposed to have a updated mono mesh upper, it's supposed to be slightly more breathable. I suppose that could be true. Um, it does, you know, it has all the same perforated holes as the previous version with a slightly different finish to it. So perhaps that does add to some sort of breathability. I've had no issues in the shoe running in some pretty hot temps here in North Carolina. So um, yeah, I would say the updated mesh. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with that one. Another important thing that Saucony mentioned, which I'm sarcastically saying as important, is the suede detailing on the shoe. Sure, it's kind of gives it like, I guess more of a vintage kind of uh, style to it, and less more of like a matte finish uh, on the suede materials rather than the shine of maybe some other shoe materials. Meh, that's, that's my conclusion on the suede detailing. That's just something I think as filler. Um, and then also, what is new? The anti-slip laces. Sure, yeah, you know, I'll take it. But like, again, that's not really like huge update. It's not, I don't know if I'd quite put that in the what's new category, but I had to here. I'll take it. Okay, so the breakdown of the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 after 200 miles, we'll start at the top. You've got this semi-gusseted tongue that's connected to that mono mesh upper and those anti-slip laces. I've had almost no breakdown from any of those materials. They've done well in wet, cold, gravel, dirt. Um, they've performed, you know, no, no separation from the midsole, no real tearing. Um, so overall, excellent for 200. Maybe that updated mesh is a little bit more durable. Now where you might expect more breakdown after 200 miles is definitely in that Power Run PB midsole with the nylon plate in the middle. Perhaps that plate adds that stability again, uh, as it did in the first one, but I'm not feeling too much breakdown after 200 miles. Honestly, it feels the same as about 10, 15 miles in, which is really cool. But my only like kind of addendum to this section is that 
it really feels like the exact same midsole and nylon plate, pretty sure it is, as the first version. So for me personally, definitely less of a wow factor in terms of like first jumping in. I remember jumping into the first ones, summer 2020. It was magical. It was definitely one of those first times I jumped into a real soft midsole combined with the plate and was like, whoa. But similar to the version ones, after 200 miles, these feel great. Um, midsole feels like it hasn't gone anywhere and I would definitely say these are going 300 plus miles. Most people out there could probably do, you know, those four to 500 miles in these shoes. Um, before you really feel that midsole compressing, I will say that's probably the first thing that will go for me. And finally, on the breakdown after 200 miles, the outsole, for me, it's lasting forever. Um, the only thing that has taken some damage is the exposed midsole around the mid heel section. I imagine that's because I've been running on a lot of rocks and gravel and kind of loose dirt roads. Um, so rocks are kind of getting in and poking that, whereas the rubber everywhere that it is has not taken much damage at all. Maybe around the toe, um, it's taken, it's kind of like worn down that tread a little bit, but nothing on the heel. Um, yeah, it's really just on that one exposed midsole part. The midsole that is exposed gets kind of like dirty pretty quick and I don't, it like gets into the creases of that, um, of the foam. So I guess one thing to, I mean, it's the bottom of your shoe. So like you're not gonna be looking at all the time, but once you do get dirt in those, I'm gonna say they're never coming out. Overall on breakdown, um, very, very similar to, I gotta say the version ones, uh, slightly more durable upper, I still think your midsole is just gonna be the first thing that you feel go. Um, and that's probably gonna be, depending on who you are, how heavy you are in your, your form and how you run, um, I really think your midsole is gonna be something that goes first around 350 to like 400 miles. For me, I bet it'll be around 320, 325. Um, that being said, just I don't know if I'll actually do that many miles in this shoe, but you could, you totally could. Okay, so here we got a new section, the KPIs, the key performance indicators, generally a like marketing slang term, but today we are using it in terms of what were the moments that I thought this shoe stood out and exemplified uh, kind of like what I was hoping from this shoe and kind of what led me to some of the conclusions I will make about the shoe at the end of the video. Um, and first and foremost, one of those moments was the NCRC classic half marathon that I ran, uh, my third fastest half marathon around 1.49 uh, total time, averaged I think like 8.26s, obviously the stats will be on the screen so you'll see them, about 8.30 uh, average mile pace, so pretty quick for me for a half marathon. And these shoes, I think, hit their prime for that type of race day. And the distance, I think, you know, with the soft midsole and the plate, the plate's pretty snappy. You can feel the road underneath. And also this was majority on dirt and gravel. Uh, like I said, I've been doing a lot of dirt and gravel running, um, mainly for that race. Uh, and these performed totally fine. Um, overall stability was fine. You know, with bigger rocks and gravel, you might want a wider shoe in terms of surface area. I was totally fine in these, did not feel like I was losing my balance. Yeah, snappy, midsole cushioned, preserved my legs for a half marathon. Could totally do a full marathon um, in these shoes, no doubt. Um, I think they would only perform a bit better at a slightly longer distance, which kind of just made me feel like, yes, this is a great race day for the half marathon, but how about shorter distances? So going back a couple of weeks earlier than the NCRC Classic, I ran a Sir Walter pop-up 5K, which was on pavement. It was super straight, super flat, an excellent test for these shoes at a quicker, we're talking high effort, short, you know, 5K or shorter race days. I did about 625 average pace. Um, so like just around 20, like 1950 time. And I gotta say, these felt really, really great. Once again, felt the road underneath, but also had a little bit of cushion. The snap from the plate was a little bit better at the quicker speed. I will say, I left, it kind of left me thinking, like, would I have even benefited a little bit more from a carbon plated shoe at, the, at those speeds? 
Um, you know, I'm putting a little bit more pressure on the shoe, meaning I might get a little bit more of that kickback. It wouldn't make a huge difference for me overall, um, but you know, something to consider. Maybe it would preserve the legs a little bit better, but overall, between the half marathon that I raced in these and that 5K, um, I would say it kind of just holds true and gives evidence to the fact that these are, they're still that lightweight daily trainer, racer, a little bit of everything. Like the endorphin speeds have held true in this second version as a little bit of everything. Obviously, I have worked my way into the conclusions for this shoe. It's still a baller, lightweight daily trainer that can really do it all. It's not really a master of anything, but definitely for the person that wants one shoe. Um, and you know, this, if the endorphin speed fits your foot well, if you get a good fit in it, this could totally be the shoe that kind of does everything for you. Now, with the upcoming version three, it makes it a little bit tricky for who the version two might be for, uh, perfect for right now. Um, and so the answer to that is definitely, uh, if you enjoyed the version one and you want that updated version with some minimal changes, the version two is gonna do great for you. And in the coming weeks, as we hit that mid-August, version three is gonna drop. You're gonna see these shoes currently at 160, probably immediately drop to about 140. And then you're gonna be in those weeks to come, you're gonna be finding them for probably around 120, which, you know, these shoes are a complete steal uh, for that price. 160 is a pretty good overall price. It kind of competes with that Nike Zoom Fly, which the four was kind of a complete flop in my opinion. So we'll be looking forward to the upcoming five. Um, but yeah, it's an amazing shoe. The version two, um, you can be looking for that discount if you're not looking to pay the full 160 for the version three in the upcoming weeks. Um, and yeah, also bonus, it currently comes in over 11 colorways on Saucony.com. So if you are looking for that special colorway that truly fits your fancy, you're gonna be able to find it, um, I think, with the version twos, unless you're like super duper picky, but like, hey, teach the own. All right, so that is all from me on the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 uh, review after 200 miles. If you think you got anything out of this video, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've run in the shoes before, maybe drop a comment down below. Uh, liking the video always helps me out as well. But that's all for me. Stay safe out there, enjoy your runs, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.